I just want to welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining us today um, for the Iowa Employment First Community of Practice. I'm Amy Dessenberg Wines. I direct the Iowa Coalition for Integration and Employment, and I am delighted to have Julie Taylor with Griffin Hammes and Associates here for our third session on self-employment. Um, today we're going to focus on business planning. And um, I also would like to let folks know that we have, um, I wanna thank Adela for being our captioner today. And there's a link to the live transcript in the chat, I can post it again. Um, and I wanna thank the Iowa Developmental Disabilities Council for their financial support for our captioner and for the platform today. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, Julie. Thank you so much, Amy. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. <clears throat> see you all again. Um, if uh, any of you are new to this group and haven't been with us for the last couple of sessions, I'm Julie Taylor. I'm with Griffin Hamas Associates. Um, I, uh, do a lot of work around self-employment. And so it's exciting to be with you just to give you just a little recap of the things that we have already covered in our previous two sessions. And um, I think, what month are we in? May. So in March, I think we met together and just talked about an, an overview of self-employment um, related to the, just understanding the benefits, the myths, some of the best practices related to that. And then uh, we last month started talking about um, how what kind of support do we provide? What are the what are the steps of self-employment so that we can understand really what goes into helping somebody um, who is um, interested in starting their own business? And we covered um, uh, some like how to, how to get to know the person, the prospective business owner a little bit. We covered, how to do business concept development. And then we covered a little bit of feasibility, um, which is like testing out whether or not the business concept has the capacity to make money and really be a good fit for the person. And there are um, multiple steps in most business development, whether or not you have a disability, um, you know, you can be someone who wants to start a business with a disability or without a disability, but most of the time business development kind of follows these same steps figuring out what you're good at and what you want to do, deciding upon a business concept, testing out that concept to see if it's feasible, um, then business planning, which we're going to talk about today. Then after that, once a plan is really solid and seems like it has a good potential for success, you move into launching that business and then you're up and running and you maintain it. So we're going to talk today about business planning. Um, keep in mind we have what about an hour and a half together, so this is um, this is really just the basics, right? This is not enough for any of us to become experts in, you know, doing this type of work. And so, I really encourage you, if this is something that you uh, maybe you're a family member and you want to help, uh, you know, some someone um, start a business or. Um, maybe you're a provider or some other type of supporter that wants to, you know, add this to the kind of work that you do. Um, there are there are great resources out there. I'll share those resources with you at the end of our time together. I'll pop the link into the chat. Um, we've put together some free on-demand trainings related to self-employment um, where you can spend, you know, a little bit of time or really dig deeply and learn about each of these steps and understand how vocational rehabilitation and self-employment work together. Um, and you can learn about business financials and how to read a balance sheet. And, you know, we're not going to be able to get that deep into the work because each one of those things is, uh, you know, a multi-hour um, investment of your time. So we're just going to kind of go over the basics of business planning today. And then again, like I said, I'd encourage you if you're curious and want to be able to provide this kind of support, um, you make sure that you have you know access to um, to more training. So let's take a look 
at what business planning is all about. And I would encourage you, I think, Amy, our previous sessions were recorded. So I don't know if those are available to folks if they missed out and want to go back and like revisit some of that information. Yep, absolutely. We have, we're recording every session and we will, um, we share it out after each session and we have the related materials with that. And we can also, um, just in case folks have a hard time finding some of those earlier ones in the follow-up of this session and our fourth session, I'll go ahead and put the links for all the recordings in there. Perfect. Thank you so much. <clears throat> give me just one moment. I'm going to grab my drink. I did not grab it. So give me one second. <laughs> Right, sorry about that. I have a little bit of a cough, so I'm make sure I have a drink available. So let's talk about business planning. Um, we are um, today going to look at um, like the important some just some some best practices around business plan development, and then look at some of the essential elements that we typically find included in a business plan. You know, just so that you're aware of, you know, if if you are writing a business plan, you're helping somebody with a business plan, you would know that um, that there are there are typically several elements included, and the the um, complexity and the content in each of those elements is really determined by the complexity and and of the business, right? So a business plan can be it's very simple. Um, it can be just a a couple of pages. It can be include bullet points, or it can be a hundred pages, right? With a lot of content and a lot of detail, and that really all um, is determined by what the person is is hoping to hoping to accomplish. What's the what's the business that they're planning, um, and um, you know some uh, some person centered factors as well. So as we start the business planning process, as we um, do with anything related to employment and, and, and self-employment, we always start with thinking about who this job seeker is. And I'm also going to refer to the job seeker who is planning on starting a business as the PBO or prospective business owner. We love to use like valued roles, you know, titles that like show like, um, you know, what someone is, uh, you know, what someone's goals are and what they're really trying to accomplish. So Whenever we're starting business planning, we are always linking it to the previous steps of time spent getting to know that person, which, you know, if you're familiar with our work at Griffin Hammis, we do a lot of work around customized employment, and we do a lot of work around the discovering personal genius or person-centered discovery, which is an alternative uh, to a more traditional assessment that allows us to understand someone's skills, interests, motivations, communication style, learning style, ideal like work conditions. And we use the information that we gather through discovery, which in involves action, right? Getting out into the community and actually not just sitting down and saying, tell me what you want to do. What are your job goals? But we go out into the community, we try things out. We support people to have holistic experiences that allow them to to have truly informed choice about themselves. Like, what do I actually like to do now that I've had a lot of experiences for, for me to understand myself better? Um, now that I've started to get to know my community and have a better idea of what work looks like, what, you know, what are, what are things that I think, you know, where, where I might be a really good fit? Um, we, we gather all of that information through that discovery process and we use it um, whether or not someone wants to go work for an existing business as a wage employee being paid to work for someone else, or they want to start their own business. And so the business planning process starts with remembering, revisiting everything that we learned about that person, because every decision and every plan that we make in, in, the, whole, in the whole process will always need to align with what we 
know of that person. Um, we're, we're not going to like learn that a person is, you know, really interested in animals and nature and um, and organization, and then um, get them a job as a janitor, right? Or get them a job or start a business that is like doing a vending machine, if that's not what they're interested in. So we always start with who they are. Um, we talked last week, I mean, last month about concept development. And that concept comes out of what we've learned about that person during that discovery process. Um, and then we do that, um, <clears throat> we do that feasibility uh, study, like I mentioned, that tells us, is this concept going to, to meet the needs of a customer? Does it have some chance of success? And when we see alignment in all of the, those, the kind of those three areas, who is the person? Is there a concept that fits? And then is that concept feasible? Then if we get yeses, we move on to saying this business is worth making a plan. And we're kind of starting to move forward into, into trying to make the plan happen. Um, a business plan captures and expands upon the information that we gathered from discovery, from concept development, and from um, any feasibility study or market research we've done. And that work, um, while it points us in the direction of the business plan, it also gets used in the business plan. And so we'll talk about those areas where that early research that we talked about the last couple of times we were together actually helps make the business plan development easier and more efficient because we've already got some of it taken care of. So we expand upon that information. We um, use the business plan to tell the story of and explain the support required um, for this business to, to all audiences. And the audiences for a business plan tend to be um, if, if the person is involved in like vocational rehabilitation, the audience is, is going to be um, the decision-making team at the VR, right? So it could be the counselor. Different states have set up their self-employment programs in different ways. So um, it could be the VR counselor. It could be like a home and community-based service system that is you know, promoting self-employment through like a waiver funded support. It could be um, like a, a like a lender, a funder, like where someone's trying to get a loan. It could be like a grant program, like a micro enterprise program that is your, you know, you've applied for some kind of grant to help fund your business and they want to see your business plan. Um, a bank as another example. Um, but we want to make sure that the business plan is, um, is able to just is to convey the story of, of the idea of this business and how we expect that it can um, become operational for anyone that's going to be invested in approving it or funding it, um, you know, or try, you're just trying to support to make it happen. Um, business planning is going to include a number of things. One is financial projections. We're going to talk about that a little bit. It's one of the things that many of us, if we're not, um, if we're not uh, tr trained financiers, we may struggle with understanding what goes into financial projections and like how to how to create those um, kind of realistically. Um, and uh, but we'll we'll talk about that a little bit in our a little cover it so that you have some understanding of what that what that's all about. And then um, the business plan really seeks to to um, uh, really dig dig a little bit deeper have a really broad perspective and um and uh fill in you know all of the important details of that of that business concept concept that takes it from being just kind of an idea into something that can can actually um, launch at some point in time um the business plan is a culmination of a detailed process it includes like i said everything that we've been previously working on um maybe you've you maybe uh, some some states and i'm i I'm not familiar exactly with the policy off the top of my head in Iowa, but some states require, like if VR is funding your business plan development, um, they may want to see your discovery process first and that gets turned in and then they may have given authorization for like a feasibility study and then that gets turned in and if that's approved, you know, we move move forward. So it's a culmination and it, and it reviews all of this previous information. Um, and then it, it's probably going to include 
some major or some minor revisions as the planning process moves forward. Um, as far as understanding, just a very briefly, a little bit about self-employment policy. Um, if you are working with state VR as a provider, maybe you're a VR counselor, maybe you're you know a family member and you want to know like what <laughs> what um what are you know what are the policies related to self-employment at the federal level, like the um you know, Rehabilitation Services Administration or, you know, the Department of Labor, the, the policies related to self-employment are, um, are kind of general. Um, at that federal level, what, what, they, what they say is that self-employment is, is an outcome. It is a service that each state should provide to job seekers um, to have the appropriate supports that you need. But the, at the federal level, there's no definition of exactly what needs to go into a business plan. There is no like federal checklist that says, here's exactly how this is going to go down. Um, and there isn't uh, a um, super specific set of rules around support other than to say that um, a job seeker must have access to technical assistance or other consult uh, consultation um, to conduct market research, to develop a business plan, um, and to have access to those resources. So at the federal level, basically they just say, technical assistance, you have, you should have access to it. Consultation, help writing a business plan, you should have access to all these kinds of things. And so um, there aren't a lot of rules. Now at the state level, each state has some ability to make their own policies around self-employment. And this often includes what, what the VR counselor can authorize and then what they expect to get back. And if there's a specific form that someone has to use like to write their business plan or if any form is okay as long as it contains these categories. Um, and so at the state level, there are more policies and then there are also practices and procedures that go into place um, like that's kind of the way that policies are carried out. And so um, what I would encourage you to do is if you are, regardless of why you're here today, um, if it's, if you think you're, you know, you want to provide support or you're already providing support, maybe you're doing that formally or informally, um, whether you're doing that under like Medicaid waiver or some other kind of funding or under VR, um, I would say that the if you're serving VR, like if you're a provider for VR, or if you're a family member or a job seeker and you're working with VR, that is probably where there are more specific policies. And you really want to familiarize yourself with Iowa's self-employment policies around business planning. That's important. Uh, and if you're working with any other kind of funder or supporter that's a, ref a referring agency, um, just check in with them about their rules. I know like in Ohio, we can, um, if you're a provider under our like developmental disability services, our home and community-based waivers, we have, we have um, employment support set up under our waiver so that someone can get self-employment support. Now that has to be authorized by the service coordinator written into somebody's plan. And there are just some um, basic parameters around what that includes, like writing a business plan, you know, doing the research or whatever, um, but it's not really, really specific. And so it al does allow for a lot of liberty, but we want to make sure that we're following good business practices and not just, you know, making stuff up. So always familiarize yourself with whatever is the referring source or the funding source and what they're expecting to come from your, um, come from your business plan. I'm going to check the chat here really quick. Uh, just dropped in the chat a link to IVRS's self-employment program, which also aligns with Iowa Department for the Blind. And so there's yes. a number of resources there. I just thought it might be helpful. Very good. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, so let's talk about business planning fundamentals. So the purpose of the business plan is to address all of the day-to-day -day operations like what is going to happen what's this business going to do right and like what is going to what what's going to be um occurring what activities are going to be occurring from 
day day in and day out. Um, that all gets included in the business plan. The business plan purpose is also to set those goals around financials, which ultimately the business part of the business purpose is to make enough money to you know support the business owner to meet their own personal goals um and then you know the business also typically has another purpose like you want to deliver something to a customer you want to have a service or a product that you're producing but but we want to make sure that um the financials are understood so that that's part of the purpose of the business plan is to kind of lay that out. What's this, what's the money going to look like? Um, Cause without the money, you don't actually have a business, you have a hobby. So we got to make sure that we've got to, you know, plan around the money. Um, we want to use a business plan to develop contingency plans. And what that means is that um, when we're starting a business, um, a lot of times we have this kind of, um, rosy idea that everything we plan is going to just go, as planned. And what is 100% true of businesses is that nothing ever really goes as planned. So we try to create a good plan and we follow that as our like a roadmap, but we also create contingency plans. Like what happens if people aren't buying our stuff and we thought they would, right? Or what happens if more people want our stuff than we planned for and we're not able to produce it as quickly? Like, you know, so business planning helps us to think through that. Um, business planning helps us to ensure that all necessary supports are in place. This is true whether or not you have a disability. When, you know, every business needs some kind of support. And so part of our plan is to determine who is going to help us with the financials or who is going to help us, you know, who's going to be working on our technology or our website, if that's something that we have, who's doing our social media. It could be the business owner. It could be other support that's needed. What's unique to supporting someone with a disability started business plan is that we're also considering any disability related supports or person centered supports that this person might need to, um, you know, to be able to do the work that the business plan entails. So we lay that out to some degree. We don't get, you know, super medical or anything like that, but we do talk about, um, you know, some of those things in a, in a, in a business plan. Um, uh, you know, depending on the person. Um, we want to show that the business is actually going to be a solid opportunity, that it, you know, here's how it's going to be successful. That's a purpose of the business plan. We we create it to serve as that roadmap for launching the business, being able to actually start it and then maintain it. And then we also um, serve, use the business plan to really highlight this business owner's unique idea and their their own just unique capacity to contribute their gifts and skills by operating this business. And so we we um, like to include a little bit about that. So um, I mentioned earlier about how we start our business plan by remembering everything that we have learned about the business owner that led us to this place of thinking that a business is a self-employment opportunity is the best option for them. So at the as we're beginning to write a business plan, it is another key point for us to stop and think about whether or not the business, again, is this a solid match? Is this idea a solid match for the person? There's some questions that we ask. Does it meet this prospective business owner's goals and and um the 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 time requirements, like how, you know, how much personal capacity that they have to give to the business? Are we making sure that that uh, what we're planning for, you know, if the person only wants to work four hours a day, is there, you know, are we focusing on that? Um, are we in including um, information about supports um, that are, that the person's going to need um, to, to work more if, if that, if that has to happen? Um, do the tasks of the business, like the primary tasks of doing the service or creating the product or whatever it is, that the person is saying, here's what my business is going to do. Do those tasks match with the person's skills and interests? Um, we think about what are those potential support needs and is there capacity to make sure that they are met and we plan around that. We make sure that the supports are available to meet um, the person's needs either through natural supports 
or paid supports, or is part of the plan going to include hiring employees and paying somebody to do part of the work? Um, and then again, we think about if those initial financial projections are going to be sufficient to meet the business owner's needs um, and their, their personal financial goals. All of these questions should be thoroughly considered and answered in that business plan. Um, another important element of business planning is that it should be a team approach. Um, this is, we're gonna come up with the best business plan where we have considered all of the options when we have multiple people thinking about this. And so if you're working with, um, like VR, the business planning is going to involve the VR counselor. It's going to involve probably a paid provider, the business owner, natural supports around that person. Um, hopefully, and I would strongly encourage um, that any planning also in, includes like a community-based business expert. And we've I talked about those kind of resources in our previous sessions, making sure you're connected with your small business development center or with your micro enterprise like incubators in your community like women and minority business centers um we want to make sure that we have the perspective of business experts in the planning and some of those resources are provided for free through through you know those um different community-based organizations so the team approach is incredibly helpful i don't think that the best business plan is going to come from just Julie helping just Amy write her business plan. I think that we really need a broader perspective to consider all of the aspects and really come up with the best ideas. Um, remember, there isn't officially one specific template for a business plan that is right for all business businesses. There are standard sections, which we're going to cover next, but um, there isn't, there isn't like, one business plan that's great for a really small micro enterprise that's also going to be used for someone that has a much bigger plan. Um, again, you want to check the policies for the referring sources or funders that you're working with, but um, there there isn't one set set way of doing this. Um, it's it's helpful to try to keep it simple, um, and and is you know. That the, that the plan should only be as complex or as detailed as necessary to accomplish the goals. It doesn't have to be 100 pages. Um, it can be just a few pages. And there are some templates that you can find online that are like, like really very, very simple. And some of them are even like in like graphic or, or graphic organized for someone that's more like to see things in, in instead of like linear or just written narrative um, with more, with more graphics. And so that the, the approach can really kind of fit with who the business owner is, what the funder is expecting, and then um, you know what really works for the complexity of the business concept. Um, the plan should be written in language that anyone can understand. Um, they, it doesn't have to be written at a master's degree level. It can be written with kind of with plain language, and again, just kind of keeping it very clear. Um, the plan is not intended to be made public or used as like marketing or advertising. The business plan is gonna have sections for each of those things that tells us how to do this. But the business plan is usually something that is that the owner and the team uses to take the necessary steps to move forward and that the funders and referring sources use to make sure that it all aligns with who the person is and what their goals are and that it's financially feasible um, and that it shows that there's um, that all of the operational considerations are included, but it's not something that you usually like put up on your website or something like that. It's really kind of more of an internal document for whoever it is on the team that needs to know it. Um, and then I would also say um, business plans, you know, we, we write it for a purpose but they get revisited and they do evolve over time. Um, when I was running my employment agency, we revised our business plan um, whenever there was like a new grant opportunity. We would go back and kind of look at the business plan to say, you know, hey, do we want to expand and add transportation now? So we need to add that into our business plan, right? Do we need want to expand and add in like a homemaker personal care service? Or do we wanna say, now we have developed expertise in customized employment and what are we gonna do with that 
add that in. And so we would revisit our business plan every couple of years or when some kind of new opportunity came up to expand or even sometimes to say, hey, we're going to pull back a little bit and not offer this service right now. We want to think about how we're going to reallocate our resources. And so we would just, um, you know, just revisit that. So a business plan can be a living document. Um, it's intended, you know, that first round is intended to get that business launched, but hopefully a successful business is going to grow and expand and maybe add a product or a different service over time. And that will need to be planned for. And so that can be incorporated into the business plan. So um, the sections included in a person's business plan are dictated by what the funder requires or what they want. We've kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, the complexity of the business and the amount of the of support that that person is going to need to start and operate the business. Regardless of that, there are there are standard business plan sections that should be included in most, if not all, business plans. Some will be more extensive than others. So let's take a look at what those are. The first one is an executive summary, which is actually the last thing that gets written. So we'll talk about that specifically. Um, there's also a company summary. There is a product and service summary that describes what it is you're going to do. There's a summary of market research and feasibility that had been previously done and maybe re, you know, revisited. There's a marketing plan. There's an operations plan. There's a management plan. And then there are business financials. So let's look at what each one of those is all about. So the executive summary, when you write, when your business plan is done, your executive summary is usually the first page, right? And your executive summary can be a couple of pages or it can be a paragraph. It doesn't have, to, it just, again, all depends on what's going on with this particular business. Um, so an executive summary is, uh, written last, you, you do the whole business plan, you write it last, but then it gets included, kind of gets included first. It tends to be read first by the funders or partners. It provides that brief overview of the rest of the plan. Um, it provides a little brief mention of the sections for each of the uh, summary of, of each of the, of the plan elements that we'll cover. It definitely should be really well organized. Um, it should aim to attract attention. Um, this is this is especially true if someone is writing a business plan and, and hopes to compete for a grant or something. And, you know, you want to make sure that your, you know, the first thing someone reads should be intriguing. It should make someone want to read the rest of the plan. So there is some need to um, emphasize um parts of the business that are that you're going to hopefully connect with what's important to whoever is the funder so that they they're they're encouraged to read more and then of course want to fund you or want to give you the approval to continue um, developing the plan um the executive summary also should include just a just a just brief description of why this business is a solid investment like you know, why, why this would be a good choice for VR to say yes to? Why is this a good choice for a funder to give you $10,000? Like, what is it that makes this business um, a good investment? And this is a place where sometimes you, this is uh, business owners sometimes write something very, something poignant or personal about why this business idea is important to them and why they're uniquely qualified to, to, um, you know, to get this off the ground. And that isn't, you know, really intended to, um, you know, connect with the, the you know, um, the audience and, and have, have them just have them feel like personally invested, right, in this whole idea, which is, which is, um, we all want that, right? We all, we all want to feel like we're connected with, uh, you know, with what it is that we're trying to support. So we've got the executive summary. The next thing that we have is a company summary, and this is a brief overview of the company, um, a short introduction to the owner. This usually includes a mission statement um, or, or a vision statement, and I'll talk about what the, some examples of what that looks like here. Um, this will include like the company objectives, like the short-term goals, maybe long-term goals of the company, a brief a brief business owner's goals linked to the business, um, 
a short description of things like the location, this business is based in Columbus, Ohio, or this is an, you know, a web-based international company or, you know, whatever the business is planning to do. Um, a short description of the product, a short, just a brief description of the services. Again, this is a, another, this is a summary. So this isn't where we get really meaty on these things. And then some, if there are some important logistics um, that can be mentioned here. Um, mission statements are usually a couple of sentences, sometimes just one you know, sentence, if, it, if we're really good at crafting that, that summarizes the goals of the company. Um, it's, it's very, should be very unique. Um, it should be very company specific. It shapes the company's identity. It um, should be reflected in other sections. So anything we say in the mission statement, we're going to more deeply explain and expand upon in the other sections. The, the mission statement can be refined and updated as the business evolves and once it's launched and maybe kind of finds its little niche and it, you know, wants to say, wants to add that into its mission statement. Um, it serves as kind of like a navigational tool for business planning and decision making. Um, we, we write, we, we develop a mission, we want to make sure that everything we do connects to it, right, um, and that we haven't, like, like, um, gone too out far too far outside of our scope and you know adding all kinds of extra products and services that aren't really related to the mission. Um, the mission statement should also attract and motivate stakeholders like the team members, like funders or referring sources um, to really kind of feel connected with the company's like the company's mission, the company's goal, the company's philosophies. And so like an example of a mission statement, very simple one is maybe for a this is for like a fishing pole company. Um, a, mission a mission statement would be to produce and sell fine quality bamboo rods at a competitive price through an unwavering commitment to honesty and fairness to all anglers. Mission statement, right? Um, I'm curious if any of you are willing to type into the chat, um, or we could even pause and if you want to unmute yourself, if you are self-employed or if you work for an agency um, or a business and you know the mission statement and you think it's particularly well done, um, if you would be willing to share that, you could just copy and paste it into the chat or like raise your hand and I'll try to, Amy and I will look for you and we can un make sure you're unmuted and you can just share that. Anybody have one that you could find real quick and share with us? Um, I'm going to read a couple other little examples for you, but I'd love to hear if any of you have a good one. So some other quick examples that could be included, something as simple as saying <clears throat> to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup and one neighborhood at a time. I think that might have been Starbucks mission statement at one point in time. I'm not sure if it still is. Um, another mission statement is together deliver the right home improvement products with the best service value, service and value across every channel and community we serve. Another one is, and I think that one might be either Lowe's or Home Depot. I should have gone back and checked these, um, but they, these are actual company mission statements. Another one is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. Ooh, that one's that one makes me feel empowered. I think that one might be Nike, um, or might have been Nike. Um, another one is to experience our best lives together based on community, opportunity, acceptance, support, and empowerment through learning, working, and playing together. And that was my company's, not Griffin Hammes, but my employment agency's mission statement. And I see a couple of things in the chat. So let me see what we've got. Uh, so Jenny from Disability Rights Iowa, your mission is advocating for justice, advancing human and legal rights, protecting Iowans with disabilities. And they all end with a period, like advocating for justice, period. Advance. So there's power in that, right? Just how you, they how they decided to separate 
the points like, like done, you know? Um, and then there's a vision statement as well, which sometimes is like a mission statement, but it's a little bit more into the details. So, so this, um, Related vision statement is Disability Rights Iowa strives for a changed world where people with disabilities are valued and fully included in their communities, workplaces, and schools, have equitable access to all opportunities, and can make their own decisions. Very nice. That's great. Um, job developer number one doesn't have your name next to it. So um, it says to promote and support individual independence in life choices. Fantastic. Those are great examples. Thank you so much for sharing those. Very cool. So the mission statement is important. It 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 definitely captures, uh, you know, our hearts and our own like, uh, you know, desire to like learn more. So um, that becomes part of that company statement, which is like the second part. The next thing that comes in as an element into our business planning is the product and service summary. So this de is a detailed description of the product or the services or both. So this is where we, we, you know, we have a business concept that we've already developed, right? So this is where we can go back to that and um, use some of that information that we've already, you know, already worked really hard on and pull that into this section, right? And then just expand upon it. So what is the company going to sell? Um, what, you know, what is the product? We are making um, pies, right? Uh, or we are, um, you know, a mobile dog groomer, right? So what is the, what are we, what are we selling? And then describe that kind of in detail, where the product or service will be located. So is it going to be in a business in the heart of Columbus, Ohio? Is it a home-based business that will be um, selling the pies at these three farmers markets, you know, on these specific days of the week. Is this a web-based organization? Is this something where we come to your home to do this for you, but we serve this community? Like this is where we get detailed about where a customer is going to find us or where, where we're going to meet the customer. Um, when the business will operate, this gets included. Like, is this a 24 seven operation? Is this just, we're only, we're only planning on operating on, you know, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Um, we're, we only do evenings. We only do weekends. You know, what, what are the businesses planned hours of operation? Why this business appears viable. This is where we might include a very brief summary of like what our feasibility or market research study showed us. Um, we will go a little bit more into detail that about that in another section, but just a brief statement about that. And then how the product or service will be produced or delivered. We're gonna go into a little bit of detail about the tasks related to the, 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 the completion of the product or, or the service. Um, there is another section like operational and management, which also, we get into more detail, so we'll we'll go and look look at that next. Um, so then the next element is a summary of the market research and feasibility study. So we briefly mentioned that in the product and service summary, but we get into more detail here. This section summarizes the market research, the feasibility study that we that we've are probably already done. That we I highly recommend you already do that before you start planning. Determine whether or not the business has a chance a good likelihood of being successful by doing a feasibility study, um, make sure that it's going to align with who the person is, make sure that there's gonna be a customer who's willing to pay for it um, and that the supports are gonna be necessary before we plan. So that's why we talked about feasibility study the last time we were together because it comes before the plan, we do it first. Because if we do a feasibility study and then we're like, oh yeah, no one's gonna pay $50 for this pie, but that's how much it's going to cost me to make it. It's not feasible. We're not going to make a plan for it. We're going to revisit our concept before we come to planning. Because planning, like I said, at the top of our time together, the plan is an intention to launch. Like we are moving forward with getting this business going. So we summarize that earlier work that we did as the feasibility study. Um, along with maybe some more in-depth evaluation that we've like uh, refined our concept based on the feasibility study. So we talk about who is the customer and how do we know they're gonna want this product? And we kind of reference the feasibility study. Here's what we learned. We did a survey, we sold some things. Customers told us it's a good price. We also summarize who's the competition. Um, 
you can have an amazing idea, but if there's four other people doing it, um, it's it's not likely to be feasible, right? So we want to think about in our community, it, you know, who else is doing landscaping and what sets this business apart? Why is the customer must why is the customer gonna choose this business? You know, how have we decided we're gonna be able to compete? Um, what's the personal capability? Like how much can the business do? Um, so this is a good uh, point where we think about, um, you know, if the business owner only really wants to work 20 hours a week, um, what is their capacity to make the pies? Like how many pies can they reasonably make in a day and, and take them to the market and sell them there? Um, or if they're going to be hiring, like what kind of capacity does that add on. Um, same with like delivering some kind of service. What's the person's capability? If they're starting a dog walking service, how many dogs do they think they could actually walk in a day? What are they planning for? What's the capability of that business? Um, you know, how many customers can they serve? Really kind of thinking about how, how do we um, uh, serve enough customers to be successful and yet not take on too many customers that kind of sat, we sabotage ourselves because we can't meet their needs, right? So what's our capability? We talk about a little bit about the early um, considerations for financials, but there is a financial section we'll get into more detail about. And um, we can explain a little bit about the local industry and then any like summary of the results of test marketing that had been done doing feasibility, we might revisit that here. We don't have to uh, include the entire feasibility study in this because that has like that's a separate document that's already been done and usually the funder will take a look at that and they don't need to reread it in the business plan it's just helpful to summarize it here but it can be made available to your referring source um if that or 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 your funder if if need be we then also have a marketing plan a marketing plan outlines this business's specific marketing strategy and what marketing means is how you connect your product or service to the customer. That's the basics of marketing. Um, marketing is like, um, marketing can include your logo. Marketing can include you bought, you rented a billboard. Marketing can include includes your social media and how you've decided you're gonna do your social media posts. Marketing is, you're, you know, you're going to put a sign in the yard of everybody. If you do their landscaping, you connect with your customers and let them put a sign in your yard for a couple of weeks. Um, I mean, marketing is everything that goes into making sure that people know your product or service exists. That's what marketing is. And, you know, people have, um, marketing is, it's complicated. It's psychological. It is, it recognizes that, our product and service is in constant competition with not only similar products and services, but with anything else someone might spend their money on, right? Like, so somebody who is selling pies at a farmer's market um, isn't just, isn't just um, competing with someone else who is selling pies at the farmer's market. They're competing for every customer's $20 that they brought that day. And maybe the customer is like, do I buy pie or do I buy salsa? Do I buy pie or do I get my knives sharpened? Like, like you're like, like marketing considers um, decisions that people are making about how to spend their money all the time and what's valuable to them and what their priorities are. And so, you know, that's why, you know, big name organizations like Coca-Cola and Nike and all that spent bazillions of dollars on like just reaching the customer and talking about how they're where you want to spend your money, like, right? Because you could spend your money on anything and there's never enough money to buy all the things that we want or that we need. So that can seem a little discouraging when you think about it, like how in the world am I going to compete, you know, with everything else that's going on? But we, um, you know, every business does need to have a plan on how they're going to capture that little target market, that the people that they're looking to capture the attention and get their attention and, you know, make sure that people know they exist in order to have a customer. Because if you don't, if people don't know you exist, 
you're not, you're not making any money. You don't have a customer. So marketing plan outlines this business's strategy for marketing. It includes those really concrete actions that they're going to take. And then also some ex, um, like estimates on like what the results might be. So marketing plans should focus on the target audience. They should, they should, it should um, detail who we think this target audience is going to be. It, we should, we think about, um, you know, a lot of times we think about back, like think about selling, you make and sell backpacks and like, your and you and these are like for like like um, kids backpacks but your customer isn't the kid the cus your customer is their mother and it tends to be like a middle-aged or yeah or like 25 to 40 year old mother is the one that's going to buy that backpack and so she's going to be the one that spends the money on that backpack so your target market is actually the mom right like so we think about who's our target market who's our target market for a, a mobile dog groomer Who's our target market for organic pies at a farmer's market? And we think about what does that customer look like? And we detail that. Like, what do we think they, who do we think they are? Um, the marketing plan is going to help guide our efforts every year. So it gets revisited over time. That's another one of those things that makes a business plan like a living document. Marketing strategy really also needs to line up with um, uh, just the overall goals and plans of the business, you know, you want to sell so many of these things. And so you need to have a plan to reach, you know, so such and such of an audience. Um, a marketing plan will include the marketing goals and the, the business objectives from those goals. It will also um, sometimes, it doesn't have to include uh, a SWOT analysis. If you've heard of that, a SWOT analysis means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, where we look at like, you know, what could possibly, what could, what do we expect to go well? What, what, what makes this, what are the strengths of our business and that product or the service that we're going to sell? And then what are the threats to that? Like, could there be a pandemic that shuts us down? Like though, you know, we all have to include that now in our business plans because that's a reality. It's good to, think about that stuff. Um, so sometimes a marketing plan can include those things. I think that it's really helpful to, to, to get you thinking about that. Um, again, the target market, who's the customer, where are they located? Um, how are you going to reach them? Um, do you, are you, again, are you advertising? You know, we use social media a lot now to advertise. Um, you know, we use our, our websites, we use paid you know, Google ads, those kinds of things. But then there are also, um, you know, create, so we still create flyers and hang them up in Panera, right? We still like, you know, hand out things that, you know, at school events or, you know, we have, we have, we can have signs. People put decals on their business car that talks, you know, she gives information about the business. I actually found a, 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 a company to come and um, do hauling the call away yard debris because the guy had a magnetic thing on his car and I was like okay he's low he's in my neighborhood that that's it you know that's part of the marketing plan and so we write that down like I plan on having a decal on my car that says that has my company's contact information right or I want to have business cards or I'm going to go to these um these job fairs or whatever it is, but that's all part of anything related to how you're going to connect to the customer goes into the marketing plan. And for like VR, if you're VR funded, or if you're looking for funding from another source, there may be some expense related to the marketing plan that your, that your VR counselor is open to funding for you. Like they may pay, if, if it's in your business plan, they may say, we will pay the $200 for you to get that signage for your car. Um, because in your feasibility, customers were telling you that that they thought that was a great idea, you know? Like, so it could be that your VR council will fund some of the marketing. Maybe they'll pay for, um, you know, someone to help develop your social media or something like that. Um, and again, that's all, that's all decision-making that happens within the team. Um, uh, but um, it, it's possible. Um, the, the, 
marketing plan also should have a delivery plan. Like, so not only like, how are you going to reach the customer and tell them about you, but how are you going to actually meet their needs? Like, how are you going to get stuff to them? Um, it should include your unique selling proposition. What is it that sets your business apart from anybody else that's making pies? Like, and so this might be something where you state that it has a superior product or that you donate 15% to a specific charity or that it's all organic or that you um, don't use chemicals on the lawns or you know use natural soaps when you groom the dogs, whatever. But you you want to have something that's like unique um, so that people, you're, you will have a customer and you'll kind of choose your target market based on are they attracted to organic stuff, right? Is this who's your, who, what, who wants that? Is it that you have really low prices and then you choose your target market based on who is it that's looking for lower prices? Um, is it that you have excellent service or that you're like on demand? Who is it that's looking for that? And that becomes your, um, that's your target market. But you explain your unique selling proposition in your marketing plan. Um, if you have promotional messages, strategies, little taglines, um, you know, ideas that you want to use on your, in your, on your social media, do you kind of explain those, detail those in this plan? Because again, the plan is intended to say, okay, now you've you've planned it, now do it. So you need to have the blueprint for how to do it. That's what the plan provides for you. So, so detail as much as possible. Um, it's a good idea to have a budget for the marketing plan, like how much is the business planning to spend on marketing up front and then kind of quarterly or over time. Um, and then some kind of tracking and evaluation, like how are you going to decide if your marketing approach is working, right? You need to know, like you decided, like, like Coke decided they're going to use a new label on their bottles. They're changing the logo, um, but they have a whole you know, they're, they're a multi-gazillion dollar aid organization. They have a whole team that evaluates, do people like the logo, right? Do customers like it? They might do surveys. They might look at sales. Has there been a dip in sales since we tried this? But you need some, some type of tracking and evaluation to determine if your marketing is working. You don't want to spend money, especially as a small business just getting started. You don't have a lot of money. You don't want to spend money on something that doesn't work. So if it's not helping you reach the customer, you don't want to do it. So you need to measure, um, you know, whether or not your marketing plan is effective. We also have an operations plan. And so this goes, gets more detailed about the um, steps, the actual task steps that go into producing the product or the service. It identifies who is going to be responsible for various tasks. And so maybe like the business owner is the one that's going to be um, doing ev doing everything, like going shopping to buy the ingredients for the pie, making the pie, boxing up the pie, and driving the pie to the market, and manning the market, and like being there and doing all the customer service, collecting the payments, taking that money to the bank afterward, cleaning up afterward. It could be the business owner plans on doing all of that, but we want to detail each of those steps in the operations plan and in it and it to in as much detail as possible 5 a.m we bake the pies from 5 to 10 a.m we then we package the pies from 10 to 12 our and then we get them to the market by two um you know so we and then here's what happens at the market we set up our table here's what goes into that um here's how we're going to do the cash exchanges or the credit cards all of that gets explained in this operations plan if there's someone else helping out, either a paid employee or a, you know, someone who's like a, a subcontractor, which that might be a little bit simpler for somebody than actually becoming an employer at first, um, or somebody who's unpaid, like your significant other is boxing up the pies to provide unpaid support. Um, all of that should be detailed. Um, this should also include that plan for support needs. Um, like if support is needed in any of the steps of operations, we talk about what is that support that's needed and who's going to do it. This includes a plan for any equipment or supplies that are needed to, um, to get the job done, right? You need, a, you need a stand mixer, you need bowls, you need the boxes the pies are gonna go into, you need the labels, all of that, everything, and it, 
every, every single thing we can possibly think of should be detailed in this section. This is where we also should address contingency plans. So what happens if on five at, at 5 a.m. Um, and you're getting ready to make your pies from your home-based kitchen and the electricity goes out? Do you have a plan B for making the pies? I only think of that example because that may be happened to me once, okay? So like that is, these things happen and they're unpredictable, right? What if you make all the pies and a thunderstorm comes through and the market gets canceled that day? What, what are you gonna do? You've now even invested in a perishable product that isn't gonna get sold that day, right? Um, you know, what are you gonna do you know, if um, you're short on cash flow, like so, this is a great I, this is a great place to just think about some worst case scenarios, and then also some best case scenarios. What happens if you go to the market and in one hour in you sell out? You didn't expect to have that kind of demand, but it does happen sometimes. What's your plan, and then how do you address that the next week to make sure that? you create more product and do you have the capacity to make more product, right? What happens if you started mobile dog grooming and like four people want you on the same day? Like, how are you gonna handle that customer service um, and, you know, and, and space it out and negotiate with your customers to keep them happy, but at a different time. So those are contingency plans. And this is where they say like anything that can go wrong will. Um, it is, it is, unfortunately, it is like really, can be really true sometimes. Um, but also our wildest expectations can be exceeded and that creates a little dilemma as well. And how do we meet the needs for extra demand? So we wanna brainstorm that. That's again, one of those reasons I think having a team around you is really, really helpful because people can start together thinking about worst case scenarios or best case scenarios and coming up with, what are you gonna do about it? You know, um, It's helpful to walk through um, you know, once you've started to create this operations plan to actually do a day where you go through it and, and, and then make sure that you like, as you're going through the steps of the operation, that you're checking back in the plan and being like, oh, I forgot to write down that part that I have to, you know, I have to do this thing with the, um, credit card reader or whatever. I didn't write that down. Like, so going through it and actually doing the task and kind of doing like a task analysis of your own work can be really helpful. Um, and then having some kind of plan for quality assurance. Like how are we, how are we sure, how are we going to be sure that we are um, staying true to what we said this product will do? We said this service will do. How do we, how are we sure that the pie tastes good this today, right? Like having some kind of quality assurance measure, we explain that in the operations plan as well. There should also be a management plan. Um, and this is the part I would say that this and the financials is where we often see business owners um, uh, needing maybe some more support because a lot of times a business owner wants to start a business because they're good at doing the product or the service. They're good at making the pies. They're good at grooming the dogs. They're good at doing the landscaping part of things. And so they're, it's it's perfect to think about self-employment related to that to skills right we should we should see a good connection there that the whatever the business is going to do is so closely tied to who that person is and what they what they have going on um, but every business has some kind of management um, requirement and some people are great at doing all of it right um but whether or not you have a disability, um, this is this is a more complicated, one of the more complicated aspects, right? Um, so when we write a management plan, we want to think about things like what are the management activities that this business is going to have to do? And it's different from business to business, but there are some common things like paying bills, handling money, um, making a schedule, right? Um, evaluating um, you know, feedback, um, handling customer complaints, um, deciding on scheduling if we need to have, if we definitely need help with something, whether or not to hire somebody or pay someone to do something. These are all management decisions and then management actions. So the management plan should identify 
the, the planned management activities. It should provide an overview of the management structure and the hierarchy, which that could be Amy, business owner, is the manager, and Amy is going to handle these management tasks, and she's also contracting with this company that's going to do her taxes every month, or this someone that's going to do her um, her bookkeeping every Friday at the end of the sale. At the end of the sales, she'll just she'll just bring in the receipts and turn them over to the bookkeeper, and they're handling that. So it kind of provides that overview of what the structure is going to look like. It considers supports that that are needed for the management um, portion. Um, not all categories of management are gonna to apply to all businesses. So we really wanna think about this business and what you know what do they need. Um, they, we wanna think through management from a perspective of what daily management tasks need to be done, what are weekly management tasks, what are monthly, maybe quarterly, um, like a lot of times taxes are like quarterly. And then um, what are like annual tax uh, tasks that need to be done at the end of each year? So that's uh, each of these things should be considered in that management plan. Ah, uh, financials. So this is the part that, again, along with management, um, tends to be more complicated. So it's even like, like um, you know, the founder of, I don't know what the, some companies like. Um, well, I, I'll try to think of something that maybe is, I don't know, it's also in your state that maybe it was a small business here, like Jenny's Ice Cream. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jenny's Ice Cream. That was a local, a Columbus-based, really small local, small business that started in this Jenny Britton Bowers kitchen. And she... Um, sold at markets and at what we have that like a North, we call the North market here in Columbus, which is just like a big place that has lots of small businesses, big open air kind of market. Um, and she started selling there and just became incredibly popular and now has, um, has uh, actual shops all over the place in multiple States. And she sells, I mean, but I mean, the ice cream sells for like $10 a pint. So it's like, high-end ice cream like eggnog with booze in it and stuff it's like really fancy ice cream um, but she also ha now has kiosks in some airports where you can purchase like a individual size ice cream while you're at the airport so expanded tremendously has been on all you know all kinds of um uh, you know, shows and, and won all kinds of awards and, you know, just does, does amazing work. It's Jenny's J E N I apostrophe S ice cream. If you want to look them up, super cool, but Jenny started doing everything right. Handled her finances, did everything out of the, out of the home. Um, but that business is now so big. I mean, she needs someone to, to, she's got departments for this stuff, right? People who do all of this. So it doesn't it doesn't matter it's not disability specific it's not size of the business we all need support and it, financials is one of those areas that we all need support in so typically for the financial section of the of the um, business plan we're going to look back on that feasibility study and like those like early estimates and then we're going to refine those um we kind of we tend to write uh, like a paragraph like a narrative summary and then we may include spreadsheets and usually the types of <clears throat> financial documents that are included, these are projections and they should be realistic, um, but they're 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 based on assumptions to some degree. They're based on our hopes of what this business is going to, how much it's going to cost and how much it's going to bring in and how many customers we're going to connect with. Um, but it's not, we don't have like actual business statements until we're actually up and running and we see what's what kind of money is coming in and out of the company. So we're projecting. Um, this is, it's in, it's it's impossible to be 100% accurate because we're making assumptions. We're guessing, yes, I think I can sell 300 of these in my first month, but we don't know if we're going to sell 50 because nobody knew about us yet, or we don't know if we're going to sell 500. We just don't know. So we kind of base this on the research that was done, um, Typically, a lot of business funders or referring sources like to see three-year estimates. Um, I would say at a, at a minimum, we're making a, like a one-year estimate. Um, 
three-year estimates is just kind of almost like goal setting. Like, here's what I hope month by month. And it does, these, these documents, these business forms do tend to be like have monthly columns so that you have estimates for your earnings, money coming in and out, costs, all of that each month. Um, the types of business financials that people normally need to produce are a profit and loss statement. That's also called an income statement, a cash flow statement, a break even analysis. That's what shows where you, your, um, the money you bring in is exactly enough to cover your costs. So that's the point of breaking even. Um, balance sheets is another financial document. Um, and then with each one of these, we we have um, we think about some benchmarks and some goals, and we consider startup costs. At the very end of our time, I'm gonna um, remind you about those, some of those training resources. And we have developed, uh, I think it's a four or six part series on business financials. So how to, um, if you really want to know how to develop and read a profit and loss statement, we are here for you. So um, I'll show you where to find those on our website. And you, if you, you know, I would highly recommend before you help someone write a business plan that you, if you are not already trained in business planning and financials that you do that training and that you also, even if you are highly trained, make sure you're connecting with team other team members who are actually business financial experts who can support with this, because this is not something you want to get wrong um, because this is, this is what makes or break the business, whether or not you can bring in money and meet and meet your goals. Um, so the financials is important. Um, I, I'm not going to go into too many details about what each one of those statements entails. Again, this is in the PowerPoint, which I think you'll have access to and the recording today. And then also, if you're curious about learning more, we explain every one of these has its own full module <laughs> that you can learn how to, how, to, how to read them and how to do them and what the different components are. So just as kind of like a um, last couple of little things to remind you, then I want to make sure we have some time for questions is I've tried every time that we've been together is to reinforce the importance of the team. And so always consider these resources. We've got BR, we've got our community rehab partners um, that are, you know, I know in your state, there are, there are some that are trying to develop or have developed business planning expertise. There are family and friends, some of whom who own businesses. Um, I, I do say be cautious. I, you know, definitely family members like to be involved and supportive um, and allow that to be at the level of their knowledge of business planning. So if, if someone wants to be helpful, but they have no knowledge of business planning, maybe they'll be great at like the brainstorming, the concept development, but maybe not the financials, right? So we want to make sure that we're using we have people on our team that bring skills and supports that we need to each one of these things. Um, benefits counselors, you know, getting a referral for a benefits assessment. This is this is helpful. Should be done, you know, when someone's thinking about self-employment before you're ready to launch. You should be connected. We've got small business development centers. We've got the SCORE, which is the retired executives who who do training and sometimes technical assistance. Meet with people, do mentoring. Um, the Women and Minority Business Centers, Office of Native American Affairs, Veterans Business Outreach Centers, other community-based micro-enterprise development organizations. We have, I just was talking to a, a gentleman who wants to start a business and was just looking for resources this morning. And I talked to him about something we have called ECDI here in Columbus, and it's in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, but that's the Economic and Community Development Institute, and they, they have grants and they have trainings and they have just networking events and you know just a great resource um, and then also a lot of universities and colleges have business resource centers so we should be thinking about on our teams this is a wealth of resources any one of these would be helpful and if you can bring in a few you've got a very well-rounded team to help with planning um so you know there are some recommended roles and responsibilities for 
both VR counselors or service coordinators, if you're here from like the DD system or mental health system, and then also for those of us that are providers or just other supporters, we want to make sure that we understand enough about business planning that we can explain the process without scaring anybody away, right? With the right supports, we want to keep the gates open, but talk about what goes into this and not to say, oh, you got to develop these financials. Like, Yes, but not by yourself, right? So there's help for this stuff. Um, we want to make sure that we can identify, secure, and refer people to the necessary services and supports for each step, including business planning. We want to be able to, if we um, haven't aren't the one that's helping write the plan, um, that we're able to review it and provide feedback on it, ask questions, take a look at it objectively to say, I feel like there's some steps missing here. Or there's some unanswered questions. Here's what that might look like. Let's let's flesh that out. That's a that's a great role that VR can play um, with with and, and service coordinators. I think too in the DD system, reviewing a business plan and jotting down. Well, what other questions do I have that this doesn't answer for me? And that gives that feedback because the business plan can be revised, right? It can it can be amended. More can go into it if it's missing. We want it to be very thorough. Um, and then also all together as a team, we want to make sound determinations based on the plan and the financial data. Now, at the point of planning, we've already done the feasibility study. The feasibility should say, this is looking good. How are you going to do it? That's the plan. So as when we're in the planning, we should be leaning more toward this is actually going to launch, then still questioning the viability of it. That should have happened at the feasibility stage. So the planning should be with some intention of moving forward, although it doesn't mean that it, it will. I mean, it could be that even through the planning, um, it, we find new challenges and that, you know, this business plan either has to kind of go back to the drawing board or, you know, it isn't, isn't a good fit for the person. That's still possible. Um, so VR role is this business plan thorough? Are all the sections completed in detail that align with the scope of the business? All the key details included? Are the financials, do they appear to be realistic and accurate? Or are there numbers in there that you're like, that is impossible. That's not gonna, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Um, does the plan align with this biz prospective business owner skills? We always want to double check. Is this still matching up with what we know of them? If we learned in discovery that they only want to work four hours a week, but this plan has them working, and not four hours a week, I'm sorry, 20 hours a week, but this plan has them working 60, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. There's got to be more to the story. Um, so does the plan align? Is further information needed? And what is that? Um, there should be open, honest, thorough, objective, crit critical, but but positive, right? Um looking critical thinking at the business plan because we definitely don't want to to move forward with something that isn't well thought out um and then there should be like a commitment to the project once we've said this is a good plan um there should be like a belief in in making sure that this moves forward um for providers and natural supports the role includes assisting with access to experts Absolutely. Um, making sure that the plan aligns with the business owner and what we know of them. Support with completing each element of the plan. That may be someone's role. Coordinating with VR and other team members. Um, and then considering really, I think natural supports and like the providers that work directly with people have such a great um great knowledge of what that person's like long-term supports or personal supports might be. So make sure that those are very identified and that there's a plan around each of those things and that there's kind of commitment for who it is that's going to provide those supports. The plan, the business plan, we don't want to just say, okay, this person is going to need this support and this support and this support. We need to say they need the support. Here's where they're going to get it. Here's the person committed to doing it. Here's the agency they're going to contract with, whatever. It needs to be clear. It can't just be this like, sure, we need support. The plan is how we're going to get it. So it should be, it should be pretty well defined. So that's a lot about business plan development in an hour and a half. Um, I do want to show you um, if you're, you know, if you're thinking of some questions, we'll we'll open that up here for just a couple minutes. But I do want to show you um, the website real quick and point out a couple of trainings that I think might be helpful for you, for those of you that are curious. So give me just a second. 
And so this is again at the center on selfemployment.org. And this is the training tab. I'll share my screen again and I'm going to copy this link into the chat. The chat here we go. So if you want to capture this um, link that takes you to the Center on Self-Employment. Um, this is, I think I've mentioned before, just an amazing resource that we've developed in coordination with um, our like colleagues at Virginia Commonwealth University, everybody at Griffin Hammis Associates and the Rehabilitation Services Administration. Um, and we have been funded over the last few years to one of the one of the like 50 things we're doing in this project is to develop these self-employment courses. And so there is a um, there's an orientation to self-employment for rehab counseling students. So if you're a student or you know of someone who's becoming a vocational rehabilitation counselor, there are many colleges across the country who are offering our course for college credit as part of a master's degree program. And you can access it as well, just as a just audit it, just take the course if you know if you want to. So you could register for it for that and take that. There's also self-employment through the VR lens, which is takes a more vocational rehabilitation counselor angle on understanding self-employment and kind of like how to um, develop the IPE for self-employment and like what kind of supports go into that. Um, and all of these come with CRCs or CEUs, depending on you know whatever it is that you need. So you can get, um, you can take one module, you can take all seven modules, um, but you just register, they're free and they're all on demand. So you can take them at 3 a.m. if you want to, if that's your thing. Um, there's the core self-employment concepts course. This, this course has a specific business planning module in it. So business plan um, development module. Um, that goes into some of the things we talked about today, but but more a little bit more detail. There's also the business financials training series. So it's four courses. So if you are really interested in financials um, or you feel like you're going to be helping someone with financials, I would encourage you to also take that course and then keep an eye out on this website because this year we're developing six more courses and four of no three. One is related to like business structures, helping someone decide, do they wanna be an LLC or a sole proprietor? And also like, do you wanna be home-based or do you wanna work in a, you know, work in a business in like in this, in a, um, like actually have a storefront or do you wanna be an independent contractor? So it's helping people figure that kind of stuff out and explaining what all of that is. We also have two courses coming up on benefits, social security and other benefits and self-employment and how they interact together. And then we have three courses on feasibility, getting really into detail on feasibility studies. And those are all, um, by the end of this year, those will all be live and available to you. So hopefully those resources will be helpful to you. Um, any questions or thoughts or comments? Folks can unmute if they have questions or comments. They're also welcome to put something in the chat. While we're, while we're waiting to see if there's questions, if folks wouldn't mind, just putting a quick note in the chat around um, maybe something you learned today that was new. and. If there is anything, we have our last um, self-employment session, which will be June 13th, 1 to 2.30 with Julie. And we're also looking to see if there's any particular topics that people would like um, for us to consider for future community of practice sessions. So feel free to put those things in the chat, as well as any questions or comments. Julie, I want to thank you again. Again, we'll hold on for a few minutes and see what comes in. I want to thank you so much. It's great information. Sometimes it feels a little overwhelming, but the resources and, um, you know, there seems like there's, you know, a significant number of resources out there to help people navigate that. Mm -hmm. um, and so not feeling discouraged so much as just aware and then connecting with those experts seems critical, I guess, 
Um, I'd also like to thank the Iowa Developmental Disabilities Council again for their support for the platform and our closed captioning. So we'll hang on for a few minutes in case folks have anything they want to share. Um, otherwise, thanks everybody and have a great remaining part of your Thursday.